Uh, so with that, um, I'm going to introduce our first uh, keynote speaker, and as, uh, as Ben said, it's Baroness Penn, the Lord's Treasury Minister with a particular focus on green finance, ESG in finance, and international um, climate finance. Um, uh, it's wonderful to have Baroness Penn with us. The government, uh, central government as well as the City of London has been tremendously supportive of uh, the CDFI and the wider SERAF program. Uh, since its inception. I also read that uh, Baroness Penn, you, you sat on the Lords Science and Technology Committee. Uh, so I think you're perfectly qualified to be here in front of a group of finance and, and academic uh, uh, colleagues. And uh, before then, uh, served as Deputy Chief of Staff in Prime Minister uh, Theresa May's um, team. So Baroness Penn, it's wonderful to have you with us. Afterwards, I'll be asking uh, a handful of questions. I think uh, Baroness Penn can, can kindly stay for the first panel if time allows on your busy schedule. We're not too far away from the Treasury, so if you have a quiet afternoon, you're always welcome back. But uh, with that, Baroness Penn, over to you. Thanks very much, uh, Rowan, and it's really great to be with you all here today. And I think the questions you just put about uh, the work of CGFI bringing together uh, financial institutions, science and innovation communities is really essential if we're going to meet the goals in our green finance strategy, if we're going to meet uh, the government's uh, broader climate goals. And so it's really great to be able to have the opportunity um, to speak with you um, today. And as I'm sure uh, you're all aware, um, the government published its update to the green finance strategy at the end of um, March this year and I'm really proud of the ambition that is in that document. Um, I think it's really necessary. Uh, the government at a similar time, the country, London was uh, ranked as the number one uh, centre for green finance I think for the fourth year running. Um, but if we're going to maintain that position we need to continue to show real ambition uh, in this area. and. The reason the government uh, is so committed to this space is absolutely uh, because uh, of our commitment to tackling climate change and biodiversity loss and moving towards a more nature positive uh, future. But we do also see it as a big growth opportunity um, for the country. The global market for green goods and services could be worth uh, one trillion pounds uh, for UK businesses by the end of the decade. And with that comes huge export opportunities and high-paid, high-skilled uh, jobs. And we were able to crystallise some of the challenge and opportunity that the world faced in this area when we hosted COP26 two years ago. And that's when the UK first announced its ambition to become the world's first net zero aligned financial centre. But the challenge for us all, I think, two years on is to ensure that we don't lose momentum and make sure that the commitments that we made at that time are turned into action. And we've seen a lot of progress in that area and Ben set out uh, some of it that is supported by the CGFI um, over the last few years since it's um, been set up. And that is what we're seeking to articulate in our updated green finance strategy, setting out um, the framework for what delivering uh, a net zero aligned financial centre really means in practice. And that strategy sets out um, three areas for action, ensuring uh, transparency of information across the economy, supporting the development of market tools, and then establishing the necessary transmission channels to shift and scale up the financing of the transition to net zero and a nature positive economy. And I'll take each of those um, in turn briefly. And I think First and most salient to a lot of today's agenda is transparency. Our plan for sustainability disclosure requirements or SDR remains central to our efforts around transparency. The SDR framework brings together new and existing sustainability reporting requirements for business, the financial sector and investment products. And we've committed to consult on endorsing and adopting the IFRS sustainability disclosure standards once they are finalised. 
The UK was a strong and early supporter of the ISSB, the standards body developing uh, this work, and we continue to make the case for its importance as a global baseline standard to minimise the costs for firms operating across multiple jurisdictions. Today we're focusing on uh, greening finance, um, but we've also heard the importance of uh, ensuring that um, the requirements don't just apply to our financial sector, but across the whole of our economy. And that's why we've also uh, said that we will uh, develop plans for the UK's largest firms to publish their net zero uh, transition plans. And we look to bring private companies in line with the existing requirements for financial firms and listed companies introduced uh, by the FCA. That will be supported by the work of the Transition Plan Task Force, the TPT, which Ben has already uh, mentioned and does sterling work on, and which I'm really pleased uh, to co-chair alongside Amanda Blanc. Uh, um, and that work is uh, developing at pace, uh, looking to establish best practice for companies and investors. And the consultation on the draft uh, guidance was launched at COP27 last year. It's uh, been finalised with a huge amount of responses and really looking forward to seeing that finalised guidance uh, later this year. We're also supporting the work of the Task Force on Nature-Related Financial Disclosures, TNFD. Indeed, uh, the UK government is its largest financial backer and uh, their work has already been endorsed by G7 finance ministers and the G20. And uh, it will be essential to helping shift global financial flows away from nature negative outcomes towards uh, nature positive outcomes. We're eager to see their final recommendations in September and we've committed to exploring how the final framework can be incorporated into UK uh, policy and our legislative architecture later this year. Both in the UK and internationally, we are seeing an increased demand for guidance on transition plans, nature-related disclosure and wider sustainability issues. And that's why the global work of TPT and TNFD is so important, supporting coherence around global transparency standards. Alongside our disclosure agenda, we're also supporting pioneering breakthrough technologies, investing in world-class data and analytics, and enabling companies to better report their climate change and nature-related risks. And I welcome uh, the CGFI stepping up its role as a translation centre and a convening hub for science and finance communities to accelerate the comprehension of climate and environmental issues and facilitating these insights being adopted into financial decision-making. For our part, uh, the government will also launch a call for evidence exploring how we can support scope three emissions of reporting. And we've also committed to uh, reducing the burden of generating this data for businesses as much as possible. That means supporting the data generation and reporting processes for small and medium sized enterprises who are often an important part of the value chain for larger businesses or financial firms. To this end, we're working with Bankers for Net Zero, the British Business Bank, and a range of industry stakeholders to automate SME sustainability reporting on a national scale. So turning to delivering the tools uh, for transformation, we need to ensure that companies and investors have the right tools they need to be able to assess and act on sustainability disclosures or to develop new products and services. And that's why uh, we remain committed to delivering a usable and useful UK green taxonomy. And we're consulting on that in autumn this year. And we would really welcome all of your engagement on that consultation. To ensure we have high standards of integrity in the market, we've published a consultation on regulating environmental, social and governance ratings uh, providers. And that is all the more important as the UK is a leader in ESG, uh, in the ESG related services market and a market that has grown uh, rapidly in recent years. So we need to get our approach right and ensure that the UK's framework for ESG ratings uh, both encourages innovation but also supports a well functioning market. 
And we're not just looking to build on existing strengths in green finance, we also want to support innovation. And that's why we've set out our intention to make the UK the best place in the world for raising transition capital. And we're commissioning the Transition Finance Market Review to convene market experts to consider what market tools the private sector could provide to scale transition-focused capital raising and maximise the opportunity for UK-based financial services expertise. And it's really exciting, therefore, to see in parallel the CGFI's work developing the new Transition Finance Centre of Excellence, which will play a leading role in defining key aspects of transition finance, such as best practice sectoral transition plans and developing new capabilities for practitioners. The third part of our framework, as I mentioned, focuses on transmission channels, the links between projects and sectors that will impact the transition and the scale of finance available. And policies such as Solvency UK, our Green Guilt programme and our work on investor stewardship will all help to deliver this. Solvency UK reforms will provide incentives for insurers to increase investment in long-term productive assets, including innovative green assets and renewable energy infrastructure. And our green financing programme remains the backbone of our green finance agenda, raising more than £26 billion since its launch in 2021. Finally, we absolutely recognise that the success of our green finance strategy relies on having the right pipeline of investment opportunities, and that relies on public investment and also policy clarity. So alongside our green finance strategy, the government published our plans for both delivering our energy security objectives and our net zero targets, backed by over £30 billion of investment in the last spending review. And since then, we've announced additional funding for energy efficiency and carbon capture, utilisation and storage. These financial commitments have been a game changer for the UK. We've seen total public and private investment in low carbon sectors more than doubling in real terms across the last five years. Over 2021 and 2022 alone, over £48 billion of new investment were delivered. On uh, the need for greater clarity on the pathways for the sectors and technologies needed to support the economic uh, transition, we've published uh, investment roadmaps on offshore wind, heat pumps and uh, updated roadmaps on CCUS and hydrogen. And we plan to publish further roadmaps uh, for further sectors later this year to give investors the clarity they need on what the government's vision is um, for different sectors and their pathways towards transition. I am really excited to be working for the government uh, on green finance because I believe that we are uniquely placed uh, to be a world leader in this area. It's because we have people uh, like those in our, this room representing world leading research, tech and financial sectors, which means that we can combine our public leadership and our private leadership on climate change to really drive forward work in this area. And CGFI and the other organisations here today in its membership and beyond are key to making that collaboration happy, happen <laughs> in improving uh, access to high quality climate and environmental science, data and insights needed to make good financial decision making. So our green finance strategy is intended to act as a blueprint for how we can continue to use our combined leadership and expertise to accelerate the shift uh, and catalyse green finance uh, globally. The publication is only the start um, of that work and we will only deliver on it if we're able uh, to work together and go further and faster on our green transition. So it's really great to be with you here today and thank you very much for your time. Then set up a Baroness Pen Questions Task Force and <laughs> produced 
three perfectly calibrated, comprehensive uh, questions to cover the full spectrum. So uh, I'll kick off on behalf of this. So, Marius, what does the net zero my finance centre mean for data and, data and analytics? And how can the government ensure that the flow of high quality data to inform capital allocation to support the transition? So I think there's two really important areas uh, when it comes to data and analytics. First, as I touched on, is uh, the pillar of transparency in the green finance uh, strategy, and data and analytics will be absolutely central to that. The other thing that we set out in our approach is uh, that over the course of this year, we want to uh, set out what KPIs we have for knowing whether that strategy is actually delivering, and we want to work uh, with stakeholders and with the sector in developing those KPIs so that we actually know whether what we've set out is delivering the ultimate goal, which is aligning financial flows uh, with our net zero targets and our commitments on biodiversity and nature recovery too. And that's why I think in the first green finance uh, strategy, there was a commitment to setting up centres such as uh, CGFI to really make sure that the link between the worlds of science, academia, research and innovation and uh, uh, the financial sector were being made so that not only do we have uh, the data and analytics, but it's there in a useful and usable format that actually impacts on decision making. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to switch now to the transition side of things. And then mm. mentioned you, you co-chair the transition. Task force alongside Amanda Blanc, what, what's the latest on the TPT and how do you think it's aligning with, with international uh, efforts? So um, the consultation on the uh, draft guidance closed uh, quite recently and the TPT has been working through that with a view to having finalised guidance for firms by the end of this year. But one of the things that the TPT has been really conscious of uh, throughout its existence is um, working internationally uh, to make sure that um, its work docks in with existing standards where they're being developed, uh, so it will apply in that way, but also thinking about how its work can be used in an international uh, context. And people like Ben, but other members of our steering group, our regulators, engage globally all the time, hearing from other jurisdictions who have plans in this area or regulators who have plans in this area to make sure that the work of the TPT is not just UK uh, focused, although I'm sure as we have more requirements on firms uh, to disclose transition plans, we'll be drawing on that guidance, but to also make sure that it's got global relevance um, and that's something that we've built into the process from the start. Thank you so much. Uh, and finally, and you touched also just on the obviously the recently published uh, updated green finance strategy, what are the key priorities for research that you think would enable delivery of the updated strategy? So um, I think the conference uh, agenda you've got today uh, is a pretty useful one um, for setting out some of those priorities. And if I pick up on just two, one is transition, which we've just uh, talked about. Uh, but the other is nature, where um, the pace at which I think the development um, of uh, uh, data reporting uh, when it comes to protecting against uh, nature loss um, is exceeding the pace at which we've uh, moved in terms of climate risk reporting. Um, and it needs to because we've got far more um, ambitious deadlines and targets that we've signed up uh, to meet. And I've been really impressed at how the TNFD is conducting its work in a really open and collaborative way so that hopefully when we see the standards uh, in September, actually they've been through a really kind of thorough development process. That means that we can move quite quickly in terms of thinking how we can apply them to our work. And when I think about conversations I have with those in the financial sector, there's concern around the complexity of data uh, versus uh, climate, and I think that's right. But I also speak to those who have engaged in TNFD's work, and they say that they're pleasantly surprised about 
the kind of overlap and the alignment that there is um, in trying to think about how you would apply something like TNFD to complement the work on TCFD and, and other areas. So I think they're really important, though, because we need to move further and faster than we have so far on climate in an area like nature, and it is more complex. Um, and so uh, greater um, research in that area will really support us in our, in our work there. Super. Baroness Penn, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, and uh, uh, I think you've been staying for a little bit longer. I must say, we've got a drinks reception at 1745. So after a long day at Treasury, please feel free to come back and meet everybody over a drink. Bring some colleagues too, but uh, thank you so much. Thank for you very much. <laughs>